and sisters of the world, uh, thank you for joining us in this dialogue uh, with you. And today we are so happy because we're not alone. We are being joined by young and promising friends. And uh, he is a uh, PhD student in African American and African studies, as well as linguistics. And his name is Walter Sestrunk. Walter, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Fine, thank you for right. having you here with us. Great, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Right, 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 right. Well, uh, we are going to talk about very interesting subjects. I think uh, as you are a student of African American and African studies, immediately I think it would be of your concern uh, to sort of think and talk about cultural identity, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because otherwise, what is African American? Mm -hmm. What is African? Mm -hmm. Is it an isolated uh, mm -hmm. concept mm -hmm. from the rest of the world? Mm -hmm. Or what do we have to understand in a complex world as we live mm -hmm. in today? So, listening, brothers and sisters, that is what I propose to uh, the sister who was to, to talk about. Right? Do you agree with me? I agree. I agree. Okay. Pardon. All right. Let us then uh, hear. Walter, sister, what he has to tell us. Listen to brothers and sisters. African American um, culture think that African American um, culture developed in isolation um, from the diaspora. But um, actually, um, African American culture and identity is dependent on the Caribbean and um, African culture. So since um, Africans were first brought to the Americas, um, the connection, the cultural connections between African um, Africans in the Americas, speaking of um, the United States, throughout the Caribbean, and in Africa, and we will say also in southern, um, um, in the southern parts of the Americas in Canada, um, we have been uh, communicating uh, with one another. Um, and these facts, uh, you can see them in um, linguistically, you can see them in, in, um, in art. Um, so for instance, um, one example is um, the congealing between the, um, the habitual B that we find in African American and you find in Jamaican um, language. Um, Bob Marley says in his famous songs, we be jamming. Um, and that is the habitual B where the meaning would be whenever we play, we always jam. And so you can, sign, you can find that connotation in the Caribbean um, Englishes or, uh, and in um, African American English. Uh, so um, it's a misnomer that African American culture um, just developed here in America uh, without any um, associations with the Caribbean and, and Africa because we can see that in how we um, display our sexuality in the performance of, of African. Um, for example, um, you can see this in the artistry of Little Kim. You can also see this in the artistry of um, in the artistry of um, Lady Saw. Um, and this is just the uh, like the performance of um, the 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 Ashu deity that we find in in Europe a culture. So this, in fact, goes back to Africa. Yeah. So um, African American culture is not, you know, a culture that developed out of a vacuum. So it has its source. I mean, its source is the Caribbean, and its source is um, Africa. So. When we, even when we talk about African identity and we talk about uh, Caribbean identity um, um, in reflection to African American identity, we can we can just say this: um, there's a um, there's a communications within the diaspora that influences all our identity. We can see that you know the influence of hip hop um, throughout the diaspora and also the artistry from. Um, Africa on the influence of hip hop, you know, and and you can see that with the influence. Um, Walter, what I gather is uh, that we cannot think of the African American 
in isolated form. Whenever we talk about the African American, we have to think of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. We have to think of Africa mm -hmm. as an interconnecting kind of relation. Right, right. And also, I think we, if we have to define our cultural identity, we have to come to terms is with what is African mm -hmm. and what is American. Mm -hmm. Many times when I hear the word or the terminology American being used, mm -hmm. it creates a sensation if I'm from outside like this. Uh, like we are talking about the European Anglo-Saxon component mm -hmm. of the overall United States society. Mm -hmm. And African American would be like an appendix. Mm -hmm. to that mm -hmm. reality. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with me in brief? Um, I would say partially. Um, and the reason I say partially is, is that yes, African Americans, we exist in a particular historical context or a particular social situation. And we, we occupy, you know, of course, a physical space yes. that we call, you know, within the Western Hemisphere, which we call the United States. Um, but that doesn't mean that um, African Americans and like uh, and Europeans are basically the same, because mm -hmm. um, we have experiences that we share, but we also have experiences that we don't share. Yeah, we don't, we don't yeah. share. That, that yeah. different. Right. Right. Well, that's okay. And and we also have. Um, I would say the means in which we categorize the world is different and you can find that again in the language and you can just find that in the expression um, um, and, the pro and, the, and, and the products of our, of our art forms in terms of music, jazz, um, blues, bebop, so on and so forth to hip hop. Right. Right. Right? So, um, um, so how we internalize things and how we interpret our world is, is just totally different. Exactly. Very right, well understood. Right. Well, uh, brothers and sisters, we are so happy to have this dialogue with our guest, Walter Sistrunk, who is uh, a PhD student of African American and African studies as well as linguistics. And uh, this is not the first time, surely, Right. We will continue our dialogue because we'll it's a permanent and a constant dialogue that right. we are promoting. And we are so happy that you have gotten an opinion because you like students to have an opinion. Right, right. You yeah. see what I'm saying? You have to be thinking because if yes. you don't think, someone's going to think for you, right? And formulate your opinion. And never let anybody think for you. Right. Not even the teachers. Right. Because the right. teachers too have to be taught. Exactly. Exactly. The teachers too have to be taught. You're absolutely so right. I mean to say that uh, it is good to listen and hear uh, to everybody and everybody, make the necessary analysis and form your own opinion like you are developing right. this very well with us. Well, we would want to ask uh, our guest, Walter Sister, what will be his message to young people, students, brothers and sisters of uh, the Caribbean, the world, the United States, Canada, Africa, Europe, Australia, uh, what will be your message from the bottom of your heart to them? Let us hear it right away if you can express mm -hmm. it to us. Okay. Well, it's hard to, this is a hard statement to say, um, um, but what I will say is um, we have to study critically so that we can understand our current situation and you know, so we can make a better tomorrow. Um, and I will just say, um, again, we have to think critically. We have to think for ourselves, you know, because if you don't think for yourself, someone else would think for you. We have to come up with I new, new ideas um, that can better our situation. And we have to become leaders and not look to make leaders, but become leaders ourselves. Nothing more inspiring than having young people, our guest Walter Sistrunk, PhD student of African American and African Studies as well as Linguistics. Thank you and I am Eugene Godfrey, yours with immense love.